Let's see if this is amplifying the tube. Oh yes, that certainly is. Oh yes, we certainly got amplification here. Let's turn the scope down a bit. Okay, welcome to another episode of Cordy Clem's Electronic Workshop. The best workshop in the history of workshops. Oh, hold on, I just need to go and get something. Actually, you can come with me. Well, there's still about an hour of daylight left because here in the UK in the winter, the sun sets at about 3.30, which is ridiculous. Oh, misery guts is out there. Excuse the mess in this place. I'm just looking for my tubes. Which I think might be buried in all this stuff. Nope, that's not them. Ah, here we are. Me tubes. And an old broken camcorder. Let's take that out of the way. Okay, I've got ten minutes of recording time left, and then I'll stop the camera. So me tubes. There we are. I've chosen a tube. Does this mean this could be the grand return of tube time? Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So what I want to do is I want to make a guitar preamp. Now don't get excited, I haven't learned to play it yet, and I want to play a few chords and do all the various articulations. I'm just really crap at playing at any kind of speed, so yeah. So I want to make an all new guitar sound bank. And I want to have the guitar playing through a tube for the all tube sound. So I've chosen this tube here, which is a 7B4. It's the only triode, single triode that I have, but that's why I chose that tube. First things first, I've got to make sure this thing works. So as you can see, I've soldered several wires onto it. I'm not exactly sure about the pinout. I'll get onto that in just a moment. First thing though, I want to make sure that the filament is working. Now. This is on the tube here, it's a 7, 7B4, so that means that's our filament voltage, and I've also verified that from the data sheets. So I'm going to set my power supply to 7 volts, and let's see if the tube lights up. It's going to be a little bit difficult because this is, you know, it's all coated inside, so not going to be able to see much. Right, got my faulty meter here. Let's, um, let's see what voltage I've got my power supply currently set to. Okay, that's way too much. Let's turn that down a bit. Okay, 7.2 volts. Let's connect up the tube and let's see if it glows. Right, so I know for sure which wires are the heated wires. So, let's turn that on. I'll give it a few seconds. Anything glowing in there? Oh yeah, can just about see that. Don't know if you can see it on the camera. So there's our filament glowing. So that's good. A little bit of a conundrum here. Now this is the um, pinout that I copied from the data sheet, and I never can tell if we're looking at it this way or we're looking at it this way. I think we're looking at it this way. It's easy to figure out which ones were the heater wires, but or filament or whatever you want to call it. However, I'm not entirely sure which wire is which when it comes to the anode, the grid and the cathode. I believe this wire is the cathode and this wire is the grid. But I've got a little way of making sure. So this is my setup here. I've got my multimeter connected to the tube. I've got the multimeter's negative connected to what I think is the cathode and the multimeter's positive connected to what I think is the grid. So when I turn the tube on, some of the electrons from the cathode are going to get deposited on the grid, placing a charge on there, which I can measure with the meter. And if I get a negative voltage reading on the meter, then I'll know I'm right about what pins what. So, let's do that now. 
turning on the power. I'm getting any change here. It's going down for some reason. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Looks like I was right about the pinouts. We're getting almost a volt. So even with no HT, you still get a few electrons deposited on the grid. Just the nature of tubes. So, now I've got that all figured out, let's go over to the circuit that I'm going to do. So, here it is. Here is the circuit that I'm going to do. Now, bear in mind, this is a draft... A draft? What the hell is a draft? This is a rough draft version of the circuit, so some of these components are going to change. But anyway, in the left circle is the preamp itself. And in the right circle is a buffer circuit. The buffer is already built, actually. Well, I say it's built, it's still at its prototype stage at the moment, and there's two tubes there for stereo. That's not just going to be for this. But anyway, enough about that, so this is our circuit with our 7B4 tube, which does the amplifying, and it's going to be cathode biased, because that's the easiest way to bias it, and um, that's how most people do it anyway. So all we need to do to bias this tube Let's put a resistor here between the cathode and the ground and what that's going to do is it's going to raise the voltage at the cathode just a little bit by maybe a couple of volts or so and because the grid is at zero volts the grid is going to be at a negative voltage with respect to the cathode and what a lot of people don't realize about tubes is that it's the voltage between the grid and the cathode that's what controls the electron flow what we need to do we need to find out what resistor i need here and also maybe what resistor i need here the more observant of you might have noticed that there is no resistor between the grid and the ground. Well, in this circuit I'm not really going to need that because the guitar coil is going to provide that, as well as the input signal, so yeah. And then of course we've got our amplified output signal that goes to this capacitor and this resistor to block off all the DC. And I decided to use a really large value resistor here because I don't really want to down load down this circuit too much. So. That's why I chose a 5.6 mega ohm resistor. Then, of course, that just goes into this tube, which is used as a buffer, which is one of the tubes from that buffer prototype that I showed you. And then out to the computer or whatever. I know I made a real hash of explaining that, but hopefully you got the gist of it. So this is going to be my setup to find the resistors that I need. So according, so according to the data sheets, I need between minus 1 and minus 2 volts at the grid so if we make our cathode about 1.5 volts that would be like having the grid at negative 1.5 volts which is right in the middle there and the plate voltage for this tube is about 100 to 250 volts so I decided to go right in the middle again and aim for 175 volts so when I found the perfect resistors I'll have 175 volts here and about 1.5 volts here. Right then, got everything set up to find my cathode resistor. So, turn the tube on. I'm just going to wait for that to warm up. And, uh, hmm. Okay, I'm really surprised about that. I'm really surprised there's enough current to push a voltage through that variable resistor there, but... At least I'll know when the tube is warmed up, because that'll start petering out. Which it seems to be doing in, at right now, so... Turn on high voltage when I can find the switch. Okay, it's got to be careful, because... I have 300 volts going into this circuit. for the tube rectifier in the high voltage supply to warm up. And okay. So we've got about 2.2 volts at our cathode, which is too high. We want about 1.5. So I'm going to start turning this down until we get about 1.5 volts at the cathode. Keeping one hand in my pocket because this is a high voltage circuit after all. And just maybe just a little touch on that. Get that about where we need it. 
Okay, so we've got about 1.5 volts at the cathode. Now let's see what's coming out of the anode. So currently I have a 100 ohm, I mean a 100 kilo ohm resistor there at the cathode. I mean at the anode. I think I've been mixing up cathode and anode this whole time, but yeah. Got about 1.5 volts at the cathode. And let's see what we've got at the anode. Okay, we've got about 204 volts. So, yeah, I'm going to increase that resistor a bit because I want to try to get that to about as close to 175 volts as I can. So yeah, I'm going to try a few different resistors, and we'll see what we get. Okay, well this is close enough to what I want. So we've got about 186 volts at the plate. And, or anode, or whatever you want to call it. At the cathode we have a 1.5 volts, or at least we would do if I could just get that on there. I was a bit naughty using both hands there. Okay, that's creeped down a little bit, so let's just... That bit, so... 1.5 volts at the cathode. About 190 volts at the plate. Still in the ballpark. Okay, it's about 15 volts more than what I wanted, but... It'll do. And our supply voltage, let me just get that on there. It's about 292 volts. So that's with a 150k resistor at the, um, at the anode. And I think that will do just fine. So now the power's off, let's just measure this variable resistor and see what we need. Try not to nudge it at all. So let's put one of my meter clips on there, and the other one on here. And see what we got. Oh yeah, I hope if I had it on ohms as well. And this is about 2.2 kilo ohms. So that's going to be pretty easy. Uh, just to make sure that's all good, just do one more power up. Wait for the tube to warm up. Should see this start shifting any moment now. Or at least we would if I had the multimeter on the right connection. Let's wait till that starts slowing down. Still picking up, still picking up. Okay, I think it's starting to slow down now. He says, well, it's still going up. Okay, yeah, let's start to flatten out now, so... Let's turn on the high voltage. And wait for that to warm up. So we should have about... One and a half volts at the cathode. And round about 180 volts at the uh, anode. Okay, so 190 volts, but it's, you know, it's still within the ballpark. I could probably increase that resistor a little bit, but I'm gonna go with this. Okay, well, I think it's about time to start building this thing now. So, I've already mounted the tube on a board, i just got to put everything else in, and then we'll test it. Okay, well, here it is, and there really is almost nothing here. So I've got a valve, or tube, or whatever you want to call it. The cathode resistor and cathode capacitor. This one is the anode resistor. And there's the coupling capacitor to take our audio signal out. And I've also just temporarily included the 5.6 kilo ohm resistor, I mean 5.6 mega ohm resistor, across the output, just mainly for the purposes of testing, which is what I'm going to do right now. 
Okay, well I guess it's time for the big test. So I've got this hooked up to my oscilloscope. Which I'm about to turn on. And uh, I hope that disappears when I turn this circuit on. Alright, let me just sort this out. Must be getting a lot of noise across that resistor. And no wonder I've got this on 50 millivolts per division. Let's put on something more like 200 millivolts. Okay, so I'm going to turn the filament on. Let's see if we can see that glowing in there. And I can see it glowing. I don't know if it's coming up on the camera. Now, go on down here, turn my high voltage power supply on. Let's see if the tube is lighting up. Yep. Okay, well I need to put this onto DC, I think. I mean AC. Let's put that onto AC coupling. Mm. I've got this connected up to my guitar right now. There must be some kind of interference getting in, but... Let's see if this is amplifying the tube. Oh yes, that certainly is. Oh yes, we certainly got amplification here. Let's turn the scope down a bit. I need to get this thing tuned. I'm having what I'm saying. Get it tuned. I know how to tune it. It's working really, really good. So, so far this has been a complete success. And no distortion, we've got lots of gain. So, I'm going to call it a day for now. Okay, so I thought before I go, I'll try to calculate just how much gain we've got. So, I've done a single shot capture here of a note playing. Now, although it doesn't look like there's much amplification here, channel 2, which is connected directly to the guitar, is on 20 millivolts per division. And the output from the tube is being measured at 500 millivolts per division. Okay, so our output voltage was 1.58 volts. Now I'm going to times that by a thousand to get that in millivolts. Alright, so 1580 millivolts. Now I'm going to divide that by the 26.4 that we got. Going out of the guitar, and we have. So we have a gain of about 59.8, and I say that's not bad. And you've got to remember, this is with the additional 1 mega ohm load of the scope. So here's the circuit in its current state. For those of you who want to have a look, this is where the oscilloscope was connected. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this circuit. I Usually when I make something, I have to tweak it until it actually works, but... This time it worked first time, got lots of gain, no distortion, so I can put a nice clean sound into the computer and then add whatever distortion I like. But anyway, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop it here, and until next time, goodbye.